Isn't uh, Reverend Edmund Chan amazing? How many of you were blessed by that? Wasn't that awesome? I mean, I'm so inspired. I'm sitting here in the front with my, I'm kicking my kids going, come on, you need to memorize some Psalms, man. What have you memorized in the last week? Come on, come on, come on, you know. My son said, well, Jesus wept. Yeah. All right, I'm using a little bit. Don't, don't run my clock yet. I'm still using Edmund Chan's time. He had an extra two minutes, so stop the clock, okay? I'm using that extra time to just kind of, you know, everybody take a deep breath, all right? Turn to somebody and say, I love you. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay, a quick announcement before I start. A quick announcement. We, um, the uh, announcement earlier about sitting up in the front, it wasn't like a suggestion. <clears throat> it was like we really need the seats up in the front filled so that on these videos that are going to be going out in many languages, we have people sitting here, and you don't have the white seats because when it darkens down, and here comes the camera, you see all these white seats, you know? So we really do need people to fill in these seats here in the front. So could I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to ten people just come and sit up here? And like Rodell says, you know, you'll, your face will be etched into history, you know? You know, if TED.com can do it, we can do it. Okay, I'm almost ready to start my, my segment. Don't, don't mess with me, man. I am the chairman of the summit. You, you start the clock when I tell you, you see? <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Start the clock. Um, I am going to switch hats. I'm going to switch hats into a hat that I am much more comfortable wearing, honestly, than the hat of, um, you know, the, the, the chairman of the organizing committee. I am the regional director for uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network in CBN, I mean, in uh, Indonesia and in Myanmar. That's what I, I'm a TV person, I'm a media person, and I spend my life... Um, and the calling that God has placed upon my life is to present Christ in a creative and contextual way to the people of Southeast Asia. And that's my mission in life, and I've, I'm giving my life to do that. Uh, but I stand here today in the place of Ben Edwards. And Ben Edwards is the vice president of CBN International, and um, he sends his love. Um, and he also sends his apologies. The last meeting I had, I had a Skype call with him a couple of days ago, a uh, one-hour meeting, just to pick his heart for what he wanted to present to you today. And the entire meeting, he was on the floor on his back because he's been overcome with pain. In 15 years that I've worked with Ben Edwards, he's crisscrossed the world as the vice president of CBN International to 100 countries, uh, just an incredible a man, an incredible ministry, which was, I was so exci excited to have him here today. But he's, uh, he has a pinched nerve, that, and he's been overcome with pain. He cannot walk, and today I, I got word back that he's really immobilized with pain. And I would just appreciate if we would remember him in prayer. He really, really wanted to be here. And because we are, after all, uh, CBN... Um, and we're a media ministry, um, I asked if uh, some of our producers uh, would do a video in, in place of him being here because I really wanted his heart. And the session that uh, he had today was Kids Culture Invasion, Animation's Power to Change the World. So we've done a, a, a video uh, to stand in for Ben Edwards today, and then I'll come back at the end of that. I think one of the things about uh, Superbook that's really is exciting is that animation really does transcend all cultural barriers. You can go anywhere in the world. You can, you can 
uh, sit down with kids in any part of the world and they're watching cartoons, they're watching animation. There's nothing really unique about that. Uh, uh, it is something that really works all over the world. The great thing about animation is that if you take the time to do the animation well and then do the language conversion well, get a good translation, dub it well, the animation takes on the nature of that culture. It looks like something from that culture. It doesn't look like a product that was necessarily, for example, developed in the West and then just dubbed into a language. If you do that with a live action, it still looks like a Western product. But if you do it in animation and you do a good job with it, it looks like it came from there. The voices sound like they came from there. It looks like a product that was developed in that culture. I've had some of our leadership worldwide tell us that, you know, I like the version we did in our culture a lot better than your English version. I like it a lot better. It's better in our language than it is in English. I love it when they say that because I know then that they have something that they can really use strategically within their own country or in their, or in their own region. The decision to launch an animated Bible series was not one that was easily reached, according to Gordon Robertson, the Christian yeah, Broadcasting fine. Network's well, CEO. A lot of that had to do with some surveys that were done uh, primarily in Thailand, China, Japan, where we found out what people knew about Christianity and found that the lack of knowledge was astounding. Uh, that while they've heard the name Jesus, they don't understand the plan of salvation. They don't know the major Bible stories. And so how to do that in a format that would be acceptable, uh, not just for children, but also for adults. I wanted to be as accurate as possible to the scripture so that when Bible characters are talking, they're talking out of the Bible. They're not talking a revised version or a version that uh, will somehow fit a script better. I, I wanted the Bible characters to be talking from the Bible. Then I wanted to make it as historically and archaeologically accurate as possible. So we've done a lot of research on each one of the episodes to make sure the, the buildings look right, uh, even down to the detail of uh, what cooking utensils or, or cooking instruments would they have, what would they be wearing. We, we went to a lot of detail with experts to find out how, how can we portray this as accurately as possible. The idea was to show children that these aren't mythical stories, that the, these occurred in history and you can go back and you can find the place where it occurred and we wanted to show that with as much accuracy as we could. You know we we made a, a conscious decision from the very beginning that uh, if we needed to push boundaries we were going to push some boundaries in this project and, and not necessarily play it safe. You know the Bible is an edgy book. The Bible has a lot of drama in it. And I think we have to trust that God knew what he was doing when he gave us the Bible, that uh, the stories can, can really be learned and assimilated by kids even when there are hard things that are being taught. We believe that we've done it in a tasteful and creative way, but also not really softened it to the point where it looks like a fairy tale. It's real. It's reality. The Bible is real. The Bible tells real stories. And by showing the hard parts and then showing the redemption, you get the drama that I think will really draw people in and understand how much God loves them. At the international MIPCOM TV and entertainment market held annually in France, 
Superbook has captured attention from some unexpected regions. Right now we are at the uh, Midcom in, uh, in Cannes, and it is the first time that we are promoting Superbook. We have a booth here and attending with over 1,200 different uh, broadcasters, networks, buyers for these networks. And so uh, we have been meeting with uh, different networks from around the world. Believe it or not, even Iran, Saudi Arabia has come to our booth and really love the quality of our animation. And it's very interesting because some of the representatives we met from uh, one of the largest uh, Iranian DVD Blu-ray distributors in, in all of Iran is that they stated that they, we told them it was a Christian property and they understood that, but they were very interested because of the high quality of the animation and they're looking for high quality. Well, we're definitely getting stretched by Superbook, uh, trying to launch out 38 languages simultaneously with... 33 websites to support those languages, and then trying to incorporate within the websites uh, the ability to go to any mobile device, any tablet, and then have a discipleship program that's an add-on to a cartoon, which is in itself a discipleship program and a salvation program. Hello, is this thing on? Those are stretching us and getting us to think in whole new ways about how to use uh, the internet, how to use mobile, how to use these wonderful technologies of applications for a very definite kingdom purpose. How can these tools expand everything we do and, and how we think about the discipleship process? So we're, we're being stretched, but I think we're being stretched in very good directions that will help all of CBN. One of the really unique aspects of Superbook is that it is having all of CBN work together on really a greater purpose and a greater cause. It has brought departments together that might not always work together on projects. It has brought people together, strategizing together on the future of how we're going to do episodes that might not have ever worked together before. I think it's been great to kind of have that focus that going forward we're going to minister to children. We're going to minister to the children of the world that we recognize how important that, that is, not just for children, but even for parents and for grandparents, they want to they want to have something to grasp hold of and believe in too. And it's been exciting for them to see that we're reaching out to children because who has a greater um, desire and investment in their children's future than their parents and their grandparents? The effect animation can have on an entire family was clearly seen at the world premiere of Superbook in Mexico City. Kevin was two months old the first time he went to a Mexican jail. His mother, Lucy, took him there to meet his father. At first, it didn't affect him because he was a baby, but as he grew up, he realized what was happening. We visited many times, but when his father was released from jail, he didn't care about Kevin and he left us. His stepfather, Jose, works hard cleaning windshields to provide for his family. But even with his good example, Lucy was concerned about Kevin. He has gone through very hard times. I just want him to grow up with hope. On Easter weekend, for the first time ever, the new Superbook was broadcast in Mexico. One of the largest TV stations in the country aired a 90-minute special with episodes about the miracles of Jesus, the Last Supper, and Christ's death and resurrection. A local church invited children to watch the premiere on their big screens. Kevin was touched by the sacrificial love of Jesus. Even though Jesus was good, he was punished for our sins. They beat him with a whip. When they invited children to come forward for prayer, Kevin decided to go up. I ask Jesus to come into my heart and to forgive my sins. I know God is my Father in heaven. That Easter weekend, Kevin found a new confidence and hope. The next day, we visited him at his home. He was telling his brothers and sisters about all the stories he saw on Superbook. He also told them about meeting the robot named Gizmo. Gizmo shook my hand and took a picture with me. He and I are friends now. 
Lucy and Jose could easily see the difference Jesus made in Kevin's life. And after we talked, they decided to give their lives to Christ too. Now the whole family can't wait to go to church together. I want to learn more about God because He is good. I think the impact that Superbook has had started initially with a decision that we need to minister to children. We need to have an outreach to children. Uh, it, impacting children is so important to shaping the, the, the faith of people in the years to come and to, to impacting and changing nations because if you don't impact the young generation, you're not really going to have a, a shape or impact on, on nations or, or on the faith of nations. So first of all, we had to take that decision. When Superbook became the um, really the impetus for playing that strategy out, it had to be much more than a project mentality. And here we are a ministry at CBN, and I know that there are many, many ministries represented at 414, and uh, perhaps you have several different things that you're doing, but uh, we had to take on this not as a project mentality, but really make it a core value of who we are, a core value of our ministry. At CBN, we have a banner in our board conference room that says, Attempt something so big that unless God intervenes, it is bound to fail. If you're not thinking about the impossible and doing the impossible, uh, are you really about kingdom business? Jesus gave us the Great Commission, and, and he certainly wasn't casual about it. He, it's not the great suggestion, it's the Great Commission, where we're supposed to go into every language, every nation, every tribe and preach the good news as a witness not as a declaration but to show it as a living witness that the kingdom of God works in the here and now that's our job and Jesus believes that we can do it we're the ones that want to limit him we're the ones that say well I I don't know how to preach the gospel in China or I don't know how to preach the gospel in Uzbekistan or all, the, all these areas where it seems so hard and so remote. But with God, all things are possible. So when we consciously attempt to do the impossible, we're laying hold of that promise and we're laying hold of Him. And when we do that, He's honored by our faith and He'll come through. Um, those, those interviews were done for us here today, and um, those leaders are speaking to us here today. Um, this, this session isn't about Superbook, but it's about uh, something much greater than that. Um, by the way, if you've uh, seen that and you're struck by it, wasn't, wasn't those, uh, did you guys see Superbook? Wasn't that awesome? Are you excited about that? I mean, this is a phenomenal journey that CBN has been on. And one of the people heavily, heavily involved in the entire Superbook process is Lauren Holton. Can you stand up, Lauren? She's here. And if you have a chance to connect with her and how to get Superbook into your nation, into your language, or whatever other things, then make sure you connect with Lauren. Um, but really, you know, the... Here's, here's the thing. The older the organization is that you work for, the more effort and risk is required to do something new. Have you noticed that? The longer and more entrenched your organization is in doing what you have always done, the more difficult it is to extract yourself from that paradigm and from that formula and to step out and to do something that's never been done before. And this is one of the things that CBN struggled with. And um, you know, I'm, I watched the process of an organization that CBN is now over 50 years old, you know, uh, struggling with laying aside business as usual and taking on things that were revolutionary, that were historic, that could potentially you know, be used by God to, to, to shape a generation, to change the world. 
And what was required to do that was great political will, um, great effort, great energy, and um, a lot of risk laying it all on the line, throwing yourself in front of the train, um, as it were. And I was struck uh, yesterday by what uh, Genevieve James said. Because she stood here and she says, you know, I feel that the church, is the church willing to bleed for this generation? And how long will we stand in silence and watch injustice? And um, my, I, I just feel as though God is speaking to this summit and I just feel that the Lord is asking us, are we willing to do the hard things? Because I don't believe that you can pioneer anything from your comfort zone. If you look at the Word of God, if you go through, you can go from Genesis to Revelation. Nothing historic ever happened from a palace. Nothing that changed the world ever happened in somebody's comfortable place. God always allowed them to be stretched, to be pushed out, to be thrust into the unknown. And from that place, they depended on God. And from that place, they did great things, amazing things and historic things. And I would, I would ask you today, where are you in, in your place of ministry? And how many of us as, as leaders, we've pulled back, we're unwilling any longer to take the risks that are required to do something dramatic for God through our lives and through our ministries? Are we willing to do the hard things? Are we willing to bleed? Are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to go farther? Are we willing to now step out into the unknown? Or have we pulled back? Many of you here represent ministries. I've I've talked to you over the last two or three days, and many of you have, have been doing um, amazing ministry and with amazing tools, you know, over the last many years, and you've been through seasons, and you've been through the ups and downs, and you've been through hard times and good times, but as you mature in ministry, there's this tendency now to step back, and yes, we have to empower the next generation we have to raise up the next generation. But this generation here that sits here today, there is so much that God has. You now are in a place where you can step out and use your influence and use the things and the tools and the, and the ministries that God has entrusted you with to do things that could shake a generation, that could change the world that could literally be used by God to, to turn the lights on in your regions if you were to be willing to step out. I love what Gordon said. Gordon Robertson said, you know, he talked about the banner in the boardroom that says that unless you attempt something so, so big, attempt something so big for God that unless he intervenes, it is bound to fail. And the challenge was that, are you doing that? And the argument that can be made is, if we're not willing to attempt something so big that if God doesn't come in and if God doesn't take it on and God doesn't partner with you, it will surely fail. If we're not any longer willing to do that, are we still doing the Great Commission? Are we still doing the will of God? The hard to do things, the revolutionary things, the contextual things, the nation-shaking, culture-changing, history-making things are the things that God is asking you that have come here in this summit to do. I feel it in my bones. As we came into this summit, I just felt, I just felt like the Lord has a message for us. That God has a commission for us that there are leaders here. I was so blessed when I saw the hands across this auditorium. This is the first time you've come to the Global Summit and that's exactly, that was the passion in the heart of the organizing committee was to get you 
to come and to latch on to what God is now breathing into his church around the world. That it is time for us to rise up and lay a hold of this generation. It is time for us to rise up and to do the hard things. That God is calling us to bleed a little. God is calling us to be willing to throw ourselves in front of a train. To say that this generation is important enough. That the generation that lays, that is literally in our hands is important enough for us to sacrifice anything, do anything, so that we will see them rise up and become the greatest generation. To see this generation now usher in the second coming of Christ. You know, God has given you a dream. You know, there's so many people, you're sitting here right now, and God placed a dream in your heart years ago. And you've been busy. You've done a lot. You've been in organizations that have put a demand on you. You're a pastor, and you've been busy. It's not easy to pastor a big church, to administer a ministry. It's not easy to raise funds and to go around and to, to gain the trust of donors and, and other people. It's not. It's tough. But so many of you have put aside a dream a calling that God has placed upon your life. And I would submit to you here today that God is calling you out, that God is calling you now to step up, to do the hard things. At this point in your ministry, this point in your life, are you willing now to step up and do the hard things, things that, that make you bleed a little, that put risk in front of you, risk of failure. The way to the cross was laced with blood and the Father rejoiced in it. We can't confuse, we can't confuse difficulty with the absence of God's favor, no. Jesus did the hard things and he won you. Jesus did the hard things and he won the world. Are you willing to follow that for this generation? in this year and in the years to come. Thank you very much.